do what you want to do. Don't be told what to do. I just think there's there's so many people my age that say, well, I can't or my kids won't let me or I don't have enough of something or other to do it. Mm -hmm. Maybe money, maybe time. Mm -hmm. health. They start putting up barriers. Yeah. Welcome to Midlife Dialogues, where we are continuing our conversation with Margie Krogel and her daughter, Melanie Murphy. Last time, we talked about how Margie bought an RV at age 82 on a whim. She named it Whimsy, which I love. Today, we're going to talk more about embracing your life, as both of these two really seem to have done. Margie, I just think it's such a remarkable thing to do in your 80s. That's very unusual to buy an RV and just take off and start traveling with family on your own, going wherever you want, seeing whatever you want to do, see. I just love that. What gave you the gumption to do that? My husband and I, he couldn't travel very well. So that's why I was thinking an RV would be a comfortable way for us to travel and he could still relax and we could still do things together. But then he died. And so I just kind of gave up the idea of anything. But as I would go back and forth to meet Melanie and Dennis at Disney World, I would pass these RV dealerships. And so one time I just stopped and started I talking to the salesman at the RV dealership. Yeah. And it just kind of exploded from there. I get the impression that you just have a lot of gumption and you don't worry about things. You just do what you want to do. And, and I think that's a wonderful way to live your life. Yeah, that's how I feel. But you might as well do whatever you feel like doing. And as long as you can, because there's been a couple of episodes where I haven't felt very well, but um, the doctors have gotten the medicines okay and I'm fine. So whatever's going on is being taken care of and I can do whatever I want. Did you grow up in a family of adventurers? No, my sister sister got married to a sailor and she moved out to Long Beach, California. So my mom and dad, they're the ones that thought that would be great to travel. So we would take off in the car and we'd drive out to Long Beach, California, Route 66 and spend the weekend and then drive home all within a week. Oh, and so there so were road trips in your past. Oh yeah. And there was kind of little things here and there, but they didn't venture off to another country. And there's so many people that will say, oh, I'm too old to do that. Or I'm, I can't do that because of, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> and you go, oh, yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Give it a try. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it, it took you a long time to drive it. Right, to drive it, yeah. Right. And I just figured if my 86-year-old mom can drive this, I'm sure I can drive it too. That's the attitude. Yeah. I love that. Okay. Margie, would the child that you used to be be surprised at you for having done all this? I don't think so. I've always just, my mother was very supportive. Do you think she would be surprised at that, at what you've done with the RV? No. She'd probably want to go with you. Yeah, she would. <laughs> she would. <laughs> No, I don't think she'd be surprised. <laughs> See, one of the things that my mom and dad let my sister and I do, when we were in high school, we joined a dance production troupe. There were 16 girls that performed, and we did state and county fairs. We did the Midway show. So we would have a bus with all of us girls in it and go from one town to another, Louisville, Kalamazoo, Midwest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all these places. They would put us up in hotel rooms and... And then we'd have to get out to the fairgrounds and we would perform on these wooden stages. It was all outdoors. You know, we had our own backgrounds. We had our own singers. But um, sometimes we'd get there and it would have just rained. And so we were supposed to put on our costumes and our makeup and dance. And But the stage would be wet. So they'd have to put gasoline on the stage and burn it dry so that Ooh. we could dance on it. I was 15 and 16. 15 and 16. Yeah, two summers we did that. And then my mom mom and dad would come and try to meet us someplace or other, you know, watch the show, yeah. check up on us. So that if, was fun. We had to grow up pretty quick, I guess. Yeah. It was fun. It sounds like you've always been a little bit of an adventurous person. Right. Yeah. If you had to sum up your 80s and your RV travels in three words, what might those three words be? Nice words, you know, <laughs> big words, magnificent and um, adventure and uh, oh God, maybe thrilling or fun or memorable or oh memorable definitely yeah. oh yeah I mean I could oh. never imagine the things that 
that had happened. What about you, Melanie? These, if you had to sum up this time with your mom that you've got to spend and be so close and travel, mm -hmm. how would you do that in three words? Uh, probably. Well, it certainly has been fun and special. You know, it's, it gave us a chance to really experience these different opportunities together. So it was special and yeah, definitely memorable. We have a lot of good memories and a lot of good stories from the different definitely vacations and excursions that we've gone on. Margie, yeah. do you have a philosophy about living that you think about or say out loud or a saying that you repeat? Basically, if, if an opportunity appears, say yes. And if it sparks a passion, mm -hmm. just yeah. go, okay, and see what happens. That's a good one. Yeah. My grandmother used to always say, never turn down a trip. Same idea. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. All right. What about you, Melanie? Have you taken away any lessons from your mom and her RV travels? Now with the internet, there's so many opportunities to find other supportive people out there. I know I, I don't know that I would have the courage to just get up and go all by myself. But if I, again, if I have other adventurous people to go with, you know, a group of women or uh, even a, you know, there's a whole Facebook group about solo women RVers, you know, just saying, yeah. Hey, let's meet up here. Let's go over there. Just finding the support groups and finding those other people that can help me get out of my my fear. But <laughs> I can't do it. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's great advice. That's great. Well, thank you so much, Margie and Melanie. I have really enjoyed talking with you. You guys are both amazing. And I want to thank everybody else for listening and watching Midlife Dialogues. And I'll see you next time.